gentlemen, and welcome to the Two Warriors episode 315. <laughs> as always, your host, Justin Baker, and as always, I'm joined by resident old bastard, Chris Satter. Hello. I, ah! <laughs> we have housekeeping. You sure you don't want to do one more run at that? <laughs> I'm sure. What do you mean? This is the first run. Uh, guy, our producer guy is going to be on the end of this show, uh -huh. and you should listen to him be be here and talk I, because he's You're really going to keep person. rolling with that. That's great. Yeah, we're keeping it. This oh, is the one. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> This is, I'm committed to it. Yep. This is how our show always starts. <laughs> uh, my week. Yes, sir. I got a new phone. You did. Uh, it's right here. You can't see it, wow. but it's here. Trust me. Um, Just like I, wave it in the air a lot and I'll look out the window. And yeah, I, I, I'll just I'll just throw it. Yeah, I, I, I bought a new phone Um, for years. I've been um for like three or four years now. I've been on the budget phones. Right. I've been buying the cheapo budget phones because <laughs> they're cheap. That is true. Uh, and I like things like headphone jacks and expandable memory and removable batteries and things. And you don't get those on expensive flagship phones true. because companies hate us. I don't know why. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, But I, I did buy one of them. They're big name brand uh expensive flagship phones because mm -hmm. um it was during my trip to florida that i realized how much work i really make my phone do <laughs> uh and it's like sometimes i'll be like navigating hot spotting my daughter's um tablet in the back seat talking on my hands free and like just multiple things <laughs> And I realized that it's that it's probably not okay that my phone gets that hot all the time from doing so much stuff. Hey, have you ever had it shut down from overheating while you're driving? No, because um, on my phone, it gives you a big warning. It's yeah. like, yo, dog, I'm about to shut myself down if you don't do some shit. Right. And so you you have you got a chance. Yeah, there was a um, there was a time uh, a couple of years ago now when it got just disgustingly hot outside, <laughs> and and I if I remember right, we had gone out for uh your wife's birthday out at that uh place over by the lake that uh that you guys have yeah and uh and it was like 115 degrees outside it was disgusting and when i left to go home uh my phone kept overheating just from navigation like that was enough mm -hmm. being in the window and navigation was enough to overheat it and shut it off but i had no idea where the fuck i was or how to get home yeah so i kept having to just like point it in front of the air conditioner and hoped it would <laughs> cool down enough for me to turn it back on and uh it was it was unpleasant yeah so i i i uh, got one of the big fa fancy phones yeah. with you know it's got like the eight core processor and like 12 right. gigs of ram and like, you know it's crazy right. and it's super fast yeah and so i was like i'm gonna check in on mobile gaming i haven't done any mobile gaming in years yeah i used to play games on my phone a lot hmm. um uh, uh, like when I, I worked a regular job or mm -hmm. like uh, when I was in college, you know, cause right. there was just a lot, I'd had just have a lot of downtime and I didn't sure. always necessarily have a game system with me. Why not? Um, cause you know, sometimes I like, I, I remember like I, I was, I've always been kind of weird about my handhelds. I don't right. like taking them somewhere That's where fair. I'm, I'm doing anything other than playing a game hmm. because I'm worried I'll set them down and leave them or forget them or they'll uh. get taken or I'll leave my bag somewhere. Like I'm the kind of person where like I'll walk in somewhere with a backpack, set it down, walk up and just walk away from my backpack. And then three <laughs> hours later be like, didn't I have a backpack? What? <laughs> and, and, and so I, I try not to take more than I have to take anywhere. Yeah. You don't want to accidentally turn into Keanu Reeves. Apparently. I <laughs> I'm the kind of person that accidentally turns into Keanu Reeves randomly. <laughs> uh, it's a real problem. That's true. Uh, um, and and so, <laughs> I, like, I remember one time I was standing in the living room holding a glass mm -hmm. and talking to someone, and I forgot I was holding a glass while I was holding it, and I just dropped it. <laughs> just like, I just let go of it, and it just... We, <laughs> That's and when good. it hit the ground, I was like, what was that? And then my brain goes, you were holding a glass, but you forgot you were doing that, and you dropped it. <laughs> And I'm like, I remembered that. <laughs> How bad it is. Ouch. You know when people make jokes, they're like, if it's not in my calendar, I'm not going to remember it. Yeah. If it's not in my calendar, I don't care if it's the end of the world <laughs> or my wedding or what. I will not be attending if it is not in my calendar. <laughs> nice. Anyway. Yeah. I do keep up with my phone. So yeah. I was like, I'll check in on mobile gaming. Mm -hmm. I got the Google Play Pass because my daughter plays. Um, I download games on her tablet uh, so that she can have games with no ads or bullshit. All right. Um, so I've been paying for it for a while. So I went and I downloaded a bunch of stuff. And uh, mobile gaming's it, it honestly feels a little cleaned up a little bit compared mm -hmm. to where it was. There seems to be some pretty clear divides between like the the real 
premium trash <laughs> and the 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 like regular trash yeah you know like it's all trash but some of it's like hey this isn't the trashiest trash that you ever played where you're like i'm offended that you even call this a game (laughs) you know it does seem there's a delineation now yeah and there are some that are legitimately good games but they're usually also on other platforms um i did get on the uh the genshin impact i've been Mm -hmm. hearing about it and i was like it's in the play store i'll install i'll try it um and and it's uh, uh it's a that's a pretty fun game um, it plays, I heard it described to me one time as a waifu collector <laughs> that plays like Breath of the Wild. And I think that's the most accurate description I've ever heard of it. Um, huh. It's like Breath of the Wild, but you keep collecting anime characters and can swap them whenever you want. Weird. Uh, and that's really kind of it. It's like basically Breath of the Wild, but with direction. They're like, go over huh. here and do this. No, go over here and do this. No, go over here and do that. Um, and it's fun. I, I was I was kind of shocked how how good it plays for for a phone game. I was like, this is actually legitimately a fun game. Like I would play this if they'd add proper controller support on Android. Why why won't you? The, um, the operating <clears throat> system does have proper controller support. <laughs> oh, I know. Everything else works great. For whatever reason, that game on Android does not have controller support. And I'll play it touch. But when I'm like really wanting to sit down, like hey, I'm gonna sit down and play for like 20 minutes. Like I'll grab my Xbox controller. Yeah. I'm usually at home. Mm. Uh, I did start playing the Call of Duty mobile, which is, that's some uh, A-tier trash where, like, you log in, like, here's our ads, buy some shit. Yeah. Um, but Not the actual from shooting, Activision. Uh, I know, <laughs> but the shooting of the people was fun. That's something. Um, and, and that's what I was there for was the shooting of people. Uh, and then I realized it had controller support, and then I started getting first place in literally every match I played. <laughs> and then I real as I was doing it, I realized, I was like, oh, mo- <laughs> Most of these people are not probably are playing like on trains with a touch screen <laughs> and I'm at home with my big headphones on and my Xbox controller hooked up to my TV with a USB C hub <laughs> playing it like it's a console game. I was like, I'm probably the asshole here. <laughs> and so I stopped. Uh, and then I uninstalled the game for reasons that we'll discuss later yeah, we'll get to about that. Activision. Yeah. Uh, I tried out some X Cloud. Yeah. Runs like shit on my internet. Um, they're trying. They're trying. You know, it's not working. It, yet. it still runs like shit on uh, on my phone, on my uh, iPad. But uh, today I had a a surprisingly pleasant experience with it oh, on really? my laptop. It ran yeah. really smooth when I was playing some Forza. That's good. Yeah. Um, I installed PPSSPP, the PSP mm-hmm. emulator. Right. That's as fun to say as yes. it is to play. I believe and it's I pronounced. Also... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's... <laughs> Uh, I installed Recast, which yeah. is a Dreamcast emulator, um, and I've just been playing around the emulation on my phone. Like, you know, I played the trash mobile games for a week, and I was like, "That was fun. Let's play real games right. now." And and so you that, put that's Retro been, Arch uh, on there. Fun. Um, I put Retro Arch in there. Retro Arch is well, I was gonna say it's a little jank on Android, but the answer is that Retro Arch <laughs> is just a little jank, just in general. I've I've had pretty good luck with the Android port of it so far. It seems to run Retro- alright. Retro Arch is like a house of cards, but on a really nice heavy table it probably won't <laughs> fall over but it, it's it's gonna happen eventually like eventually it's gonna, eventually you're gonna open up retro arch it's gonna be like up is down left is right we don't know what's happening and you're like okay retro arch <laughs> i guess i'm reinstalling you today <laughs> um but yeah uh just having a lot of fun with that new phone it's nice. it's uh it's pretty cool i'm enjoying i got the big phone too i've been doing the little phones for like years now i've been on little phones since like the iPhone 6? Hmm. What are they on now? Like the iPhone 30, yeah, 35, 30, something like that? 38. Uh, they just made their 20th, 21st Samsung phone. They're on the 21 of that I one. Know. They, I know. They're really catching up. I don't remember there being an 11 or 12 or there 13, any of that. But uh, they're all, uh, they, they were all included with Windows 9. Uh, is that what it was? Yeah. I was going to make a Windows 9 joke. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, um, so I got the big one and I'm yeah. liking the big one. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's fun. I'm sure I'll get sick of it in a couple of years and be like, now I want a little phone, but, yeah. um, I feel like I'm kind of up. Op- like everyone I know is getting the little phones mm-hmm. these days. Um, yeah, I've been on big phones for a while. I was on the, uh, pixel two XL. You, I don't know why I thought you were on the little, I thought you recently switched to the I little did. phones I, like I, your last phone. I, I moved from the pixel two XL to the pixel five, which didn't have an XL. So I had to yeah. settle, but even then the, the pixel five has a six inch screen on it. Uh, yeah, I think mine's six point eight or nine. Yeah. Well, it's the the phone is quite a bit smaller than my two XL was, but because there's no bezel on any side, 
the screen is about the same size as my Pixel 2 XL was. So yeah, uh, I'm I'm not losing anything. It's just a smaller grip. Right. Um. Anyway, uh, that that's about it. Just playing lots and lots of games on my phone. Yeah. Um, honestly, I've discovered my problem with <laughs> playing phone games is the same, especially with Play Pass, is mm-hmm. the same as my problem with uh, emulation, mm. which is I just go to the Play Store and install like 50 games, <laughs> and then I go open my games menu and I'm like, oh fuck, whoa, do, what do I play? Do you have that problem with Game Pass as well? Uh, no, because Game Pass I have to commit and it takes a long time to install those oh, games. That's fair. Unless with Game Pass, it's like, oh, I want to play this game. It's going to take four or five hours to install. So Ooh. then I'm like sitting there waiting on it. And I'm like, ah, oh, here it is. I forget how bad your internet is sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I will say it's my first 5G phone. Yeah. And my home internet, for people that don't know, I get between 30 and 33 megs down for 120 American dollars a month. Ooh. Just so everyone knows how badly I'm getting robbed. Yeah. Um, And I got on the 5G and I tested it, and it was getting like five times my home internet speed. And I was like, why am I fucking paying for anything? <laughs> and the answer is stability. You yeah. need a stable connection. Also, mobile data can get expensive. One. This is true. Um, this is true. I, um, I've i been playing around with operating systems. Uh, that's oh, that's been my those. thing. Um, uh, for people who don't know, outside of uh, of this show, I work in IT, so I do a lot of IT shit all day, What's every it? day. Uh, exactly. <laughs> um, there, there was this uh, old guy that used to work in my office who who retired a couple of years ago, and every time he would walk past the IT room, he would poke his head in, no matter what other thing he was doing. He could be touring a visitor or a customer around, and he would like get halfway past the door, lean back and 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 stick his head in like a cartoon character and say, hey, you guys are it. And then walk <laughs> off. And that was like, at first I was like, that's really dumb and I hate it. But by the time he retired, I was like, I'm going to miss being it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but anyway, so I've been playing with operating systems. My, uh, my Linux Mint install that I've had on a VM for years borked, and so I'm playing around with uh, the KDE variant of Ubuntu um, mm-hmm. just to, to play around with that. Uh, and I also, uh, because somebody posted it in the general chat on our Discord a, a week or so ago, uh, I was playing around with, uh, uh, I believe it's called Batocera Linux. Um, oh, yeah. I, I've seen that kind of propped up as a, a, a retro pie alternative yeah. operating system. Well, it's it's basically just, you know, it's still RetroArch and Emulation Station, <laughs> but the the main install of it is designed for uh, uh, Intel-based chips, so mm-hmm. uh, x86-64 computers. Yeah. So if you have an old PC laying around... Um, especially one with a halfway decent processor, one that's uh, five or six or seven years old, uh, you can put Batisera Linux on there. It basically acts like a RetroPie, but because it's a computer, you've got room for a giant solid-state drive, and you've got a dedicated video card, and it comes pre-installed right. with like the PS3 emulator and the Dreamcast emulator and yeah. all this other stuff that a Pi absolutely can't handle. So uh, after playing around with it and... Because it's a computer, you can just press F1 and it opens up a file manager so that you can just copy ROMs from a flash drive rather than having yeah. to deal with all the nonsense that a RetroPie has. So uh, I'm I'm really tempted to make it my replacement for my RetroPie. Just, I've got an old laptop that was sitting around that's an i7 with 32 gigs of RAM, and uh, it, it'll handle any game I throw at it, I imagine, up to at least PS2, possibly early PS3. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm I'm thinking about uh, uh, swapping out my RetroPie for an old Dell laptop. Uh, yeah, I mean, why the heck not? Right? You know, it, it it'll be cheaper to add more storage to it too if I decide to do that. Then um, you can turn your RetroPie into a media server to serve ROMs over the network to your <laughs> Dell. Yay! That's not Wait useless. <laughs> <laughs> it's called upcycling. I have so many Raspberry Pis in this house. Anyway, oh, man, I I keep accruing them, yeah. and then I'll retire some for something, and then all of a sudden I'll be out because they'll all be in use doing some project. <laughs> right. But yeah, so uh, that, and also I updated uh, first one computer and then both computers to Windows 11. How is the Windows 11? It's fine. It's it's Windows 10, but it looks a little different. <laughs> Um, they, they're eventually, that's, I just want you to know, that's the most glowing windows review I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> How's windows blank? It's fine. 
Yeah. Uh, eventually, they're supposedly adding Android app support, and that's really what I'm looking forward to to test the Android yeah, app I'm support. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm I'm disappointed that it will support the Amazon App Store and not the the Google yeah. Play Store. But well, I assume you could kind of I don't want to say side load because it's a PC. It's just regular. It's front load right. on a PC. Yeah. But you know, I assume you could if it supports the architecture. It yes. Supports the architecture. Yeah, there's got to be a way to. They did say it will play. support just APK files. You can install those. Um, Beautiful. Uh, now, granted, right after Microsoft announced that was when uh, uh, Google also announced that they were going to go away from APK files on the Google Play Store by next year. Oh, my year. God, what? Uh, uh, so, you know, the, the APK format that Windows 11 will support is immediately antiquated. Um, <laughs> God damn it. But Amazon has also said that they are also going to support these new app bundles instead of the, the uh, application packs. Uh, so presumably Windows 11 will also support those. What is the difference between a pack and a bundle? I don't fucking know. I read the specifications on it and my eyes glazed over and then I closed <laughs> the document and I did not care anymore. Yeah, once you get into reading uh, uh, software <laughs> container <laughs> infrastructure yeah. patch notes, you're like, I think I'm done. Yeah. I'm yeah, done much. computering for today. Right? Uh, Let's but no, go do something fun. There, there are a couple of uh, neat little things with Windows 11 so far, but nothing that noteworthy, nothing that will sell anybody on it. But the, the good news is it doesn't seem to break anything. So it's got that going for it. Yeah. Uh, let's do the news. Yeah. Uh, first up, hacker arrested in Japan for selling modified Breath of the Wild save data. <sighs> on the one hand... No, not on, not on any hand. <laughs> Fuck you, uh, Japan. Right. I mean, just selling modified save data. Yeah. I mean, now, you could I feel you could even make the argument that your save data is your save data right. that you have generated. Well, the, yeah, I don't. It's just uh, Japan has has for a very long time had much more strict rules regarding uh, uh, game and console manipulation than right. a lot of the Western world. But has. I mean, modifying your personal save data. Yeah. And, I mean, I get I mean, it. He was selling it, and right. that's that's you know, I don't want to say that's not a bridge too far at all. Um, but I can see how that's getting close to a bridge that may be too. Far because that's very close to selling um, right you know cracks or you right. know stuff like that and maybe like, that I was understand. their fear was maybe this data could be used to hack the console and they wanted to nip it before somebody figures that out but if that's but, not the purpose of the data you're selling then it's not the right. purpose of the data you're selling exactly. I mean, you know i it, that is frustrating yeah <clears throat> uh the record for the most expensive video game ever sold was broken days after the previous record was set when a sealed and graded copy of super mario 64 was sold for one million five hundred sixty thousand uh, dollars, and it was bullshit. Yeah, and so this happened uh, the next morning after we recorded last. Yeah, uh, and and at that point we were already reeling from that uh, what eight hundred and sixty thousand dollars Zelda sale or whatever now, it was. I have heard that some of the people who put in money to purchase this mm -hmm. are on the board of the company that does the grading. Yeah, and also the auction house. Uh, also, Which means uh, a, that... A co-owner of the auction house was also on this group of people who bid that. Which means that this is an ad. Mm -hmm. And they did it as an advertisement yeah. for their auction house and for their video game grading service. And it fucking worked because every outlet picked this yes. up. Even us, we're talking about it right now. It, it, um, places that don't talk about video talk. games were talking about it. The 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 marketplace what, report for, on the radio was talking about it. One and a half million, it. that is a hell of an ad campaign. Oh, yeah. And that's what that is. To please, no one be mistaken, this is an advertisement. Right. It's a stunt. But it's a stunt that is an advertisement. And also, uh, uh, it, it boosted the price of that game, too. Because yeah. uh, sealed copies of the game prior to this were selling for a lot. I mean, it's a sealed copy of a very popular game. I, I believe it was mm -hmm. selling for several hundred dollars. And yeah. since then, copies have been selling for several thousand dollars. Yeah. So, so this, this is... This is, this is artificial mm -hmm. this is an advertisement yeah. it's fucked up and it's damaging to our hobby right yes i agree with that but but please don't take this for anything other than what it is which is it's an ad it's right. I, I mean full on but it's an uh, ad that's Ra going... ralphie from fucking christmas story <laughs> like it's a crummy ad like it, this right. is an ad yeah but it it's is. one that's going to manipulate prices within uh the industry right. and that's it's an really ad unfortunate with, with sub goals that yeah. it is also uh, uh, achieved in in great quantity. Yeah. I'm sure that they're making. They've already made more than their money oh, back. I'm sure. Uh, just in people sending in copies of Mario 64 to get graded. Yeah, and I'm other sure. shit too. 
a disagreement between Sega and the talent agency that represents star Takuya Kimura regarding a possible PC release of uh, uh, the the Judgment games uh, has led to an early may lead to an early end to the Judgment series. Yeah. So yeah. basically, Takuya Kimura, the the star of 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 Judgment of Judgment, um, was upset that they would put it on PC. Well, apparently, he was not. He was supportive. Oh, he of wasn't. It. It's his okay. talent agency was upset. Why the fuck do they even care? Because they are worried that someone will mod the game to make him look different. Who the... Oh, my God. Yeah. That seems to be the reason. I, I didn't see anything that said it definitively. I mean, yes, of course they will. Yes. <laughs> you know, so put him on a dinosaur body. They'll make him have a baby right. head. They'll do all sorts of shit. It's PC. So but... someone immediately took a PS4 emulator and a copy of the game and made him bald. And started like, circulating that image just to show them, like, who the fuck cares if it's on PC? We can do that today. Yeah, well, that, that's like getting upset that, well, I don't want to air it on TV because people could just draw a mustache on me on their television. Right. Like, who the fuck cares? It's just such a silly thing. Well, and they didn't say definitively that that's the reason. It was <clears throat> private conversations between them and Sega. Uh, but that seems to be what everyone has been able to get from the conversation, is that is their complaint. Uh, the star himself... Uh, he can't openly say, I don't really care about this and I want to yeah, do it. Obviously, he can't but, comment. But he has made it very clear that he wants to continue doing the games. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, and we we don't know, maybe this will get worked out between Sega and this yeah, agency. It could happen. But uh, that's, what a shitty situation to, to lead to the end of a, a series. Yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV is selling so well that Square Enix has sold out of digital copies. And normally, which does it, which does make sense for right, an MMO because exactly. you have limited server capacity, and they're like, "Look, man, we we if everyone that owns the game starts playing tomorrow, we're screwed. We'll right. collapse." Like I get it. Yeah, you know, yeah. But. Normally, I would call bullshit on selling out on something digital, but yeah, all right, you get what this do you mean? one. Nintendo sold out of digital stuff all the time. They sold out of digital Fire Emblem. They sold <sighs> yeah. out of digital Mario Thirty Five. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, uh, they sold out of uh, digital. What's the other one? Mario All Stars. Yeah. Yeah, just they just ran out of digital. They only copied it so many times. Yeah, and they ran out of those copies. They only then. had so many ROMs. Uh, Atlas launches a Persona 25th anniversary website and teases seven new projects. Oof. Which are they? Games? Are they soundtrack releases? Are they hats? Who knows? We don't know. <laughs> They're all hats. They're projects. There's <laughs> seven fancy hats. <laughs> Uh, Tag Hewer reveals a limited edition $2,150 Super Mario watch. If in well, my problem, because uh -huh. watches are expensive. I, don't, I mean, I, I don't know why. Uh, I mean, uh, you can get them at Walmart for like $9. I think I just don't understand something about watches. Yeah. Um, Mine is but my $20. Problem with the, I, don't, I don't know. My problem with the watches, I, I've seen some fancy watches that I'm like, yeah, I, that man, that's expensive as shit, but look how cool it is. Right. This is a stupid looking yes, watch. Yes, it looks really dumb. It looks like it, it looks like the expensive version of that old Mickey Mouse watch from back in the day. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's really dumb looking and I can't imagine who wants a watch that looks like that and is also the kind of person that spends over two thousand dollars on a watch. Yeah. I, I mean I know there was well, there are watch people out there that they're like, You just don't get it and I don't. I don't get it. Yeah. But man, that seems it seems so ugly. But like the, is, there, surely there's a subset of watch <laughs> people who are like I love really high quality watches, but I like them to be stupid and <laughs> ugly. There has to be. Fortunately, they had the good sense to announce this right after that ludicrous Mario 64 <laughs> auction. So yeah. it didn't sound like the dumbest, most expensive Mario thing you could buy that week. Yeah. Uh, the Australian Parliament is considering legalization. Legislation. To, or pardon me, legislation to ban loot boxes for players under age 18. Which Good. they should, yeah. because it is gambling. Yay, True. we did it. We got there. <laughs> uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl announced to be developed by Slap City developer Ludosity. Those are a lot of weird words I said all together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh, like it, Nickelodeon, so I'm, I'm excited for yeah, it. Yeah, Slap City is a, a kind of a, a, a fan-made tribute to, I believe it was a, a Smash Brothers Melee is what they were trying yeah. to emulate. Google further attempting to attract developers to Stadia by reducing their cut on the first $3 million in sales and introducing new tools to convert DirectX games to run on Stadia. The problem is they don't believe in their own project. Right. Um, so it's not going to go anywhere. 
but yeah. um, they're they're slowly I, starting to advertise it more. I noticed on my <laughs> my Chromecast when I turned it on, normally it just shows me some TV shows I can watch or some movies yeah. I can watch. And and yesterday, now Google's like, "Hey, we have Stadia, did you know?" It, it was like, "Do you want to watch Boss Baby on Peacock or maybe play Assassin's Creed on Stadia?" And I'm like, "I want like, neither of those no. things, Google. Thank you." Google, oh, pardon me. Uh, the strong, the strong National Museum of Play has acquired id Software's prototype of a PC port of Super Mario Brothers three that was used as an unsuccessful pitch to Nintendo. And it's like bizarro when you look at it. <laughs> it's like whenever when you were in kindergarten and your class traveled to a different school and you saw other kindergarten classes right. and you're like, they look like us, but they're different than us. It's weird. <laughs> Yeah, it's, and it's like that. And a couple of years ago, and we probably talked about it on the show when it happened, but uh, John Romero had uploaded a video of himself playing this prototype, <laughs> and uh, and so you can watch it in action too, and it's even more it's bizarre. Uh, Cave announced a new t- Toho Toho. I to- believe it's Toho. Toho to- Toho game for <laughs> release in 2022 in Japan. Uh, I'm just glad that Cave is still around doing their Cave thing, right? Because if you ask me. Because I forget they exist, and if you're like, hey, Justin, is Cave still around? They'll be like, those old schmup company? There's no fucking way they're still making stuff. The Toho games still come out pretty often. I played that uh, True. that uh, Luna Knight's Toho Metroidvania spinoff game last year, and that was fun. Yeah. Uh, Super Robot Wars 30 announced for international release in October 2021 on PS4 and Switch and Steam. Which so, I believe uh, is the, the first main series game to be released uh, internationally, isn't it? Um, or at least the first one no. on PC, anyway. Um, yeah, I think it's the first international PC one. The the, the there are two or three on Switch mm. that have uh, English in the game right. in the uh, uh, Asia region. Yeah, but that's in Asia region. Um, I'm talking about internationally. And then uh, uh, I think the last the, the the last time I remember a Robot Wars game releasing legit in America was GBA. I think right. there was one or two on GBA that came out. Were they? I think so. Were, I'm like they or something, sure. Though? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Square Enix has announced a mobile spinoff of Bravely Default called Bravely Default Brilliant Lights. And knowing Square Enix and their mobile output, there's a 50-50 chance that it's actually a game. Yeah, it, it could be either a, a glorified tech demo or a $31 game. <laughs> Psychonauts 2 will feature an invincibility toggle. Double Fine representative says, quote, and this is a controversial statement, so everyone brace yourself. I've learned this is a controversial statement. I would have never guessed. All people should be able to enjoy games. That's true. I'm going to back that up. Everyone calm down. Oh, shit. My bad. Re- stop reeling. I, I, shouldn't, just... I shouldn't have publicly backed that up, should I? That was just hold on, please. R- radical statement. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, I agree with them, yeah, and I love too. the way they said it. Right. Uh, Tetsuya Nomura hints at Final Fantasy X3. 10 3. That. 10-3, goddamn Roman numerals, Final <laughs> Fantasy 10-3, <laughs> that could happen after Final Fantasy 7 reboot completes. Remake. Remake. There you go. Sure. Fine. You've played video games before, right? I'm aware of these. <laughs> I know it like Mario, yeah. that million dollar uh, video game. <laughs> Phil Spencer thinks the Dual Sins is pretty neat, and anytime Phil Spencer says anything, <laughs> it is international video game news, I love because it. Phil Spencer... It talks like a regular human being right. instead of talking like an executive robot right. from Ubisoft. <laughs> and so he'll be like, yeah, I don't know, Sony's pretty great. And then the next day you see headlines on IG and they're like, Phil Spencer might be joining Sony. Yeah. And he's like, no, I just said the PlayStation was cool. Like, I don't right. I'm, I don't know why you guys are so weird. Like he, he, every time he does a, a, a video from his home, he always has that Switch and that Death Stranding figure behind him. And every single yeah. time people are like, he's teaming up with Konami to buy Nintendo. And I'm like... What, how like, does no, that he just happen? seems like he likes video games right? and talking to people. Yeah. Like, just, <laughs> uh, mobile game Mega Man X Dive is releasing in the West on August 16th and uses the engine from Maverick Hunter X, yes. as we discussed on that episode. Right. So uh, exciting that they're still using that engine. Not excited that it's a mobile game. We'll yeah. see. Netflix to add video games to streaming service at no additional cost. I don't even know what that means <laughs> or how I'd play them. I'm, I, I don't even know. Yeah, I'm curious how the actual uh, interface will be. Will it just be well, remote-based games? A big, you're going to get a big sheet, like those old-school gel overlays you yeah. put on your TV for your old-school <laughs> game consoles, yeah. and you lay it over your TV, and it gives you big, giant touch buttons oh, down in the corners. Perfect. You know, and you just play it like a giant phone. Yay. 
Perfect. Fan Modder has found a potential fix for the Joy-Con drift issue that can be performed with just a piece of paper or cardboard. And, of course, the tools necessary to open uh, up your Joy-Con. Doing what Nintendo wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, Valve announces and then proceeds to sell out of the Steam Deck. Yeah. Uh, which is a, a new um, mobile... Uh, it's basically like a Switch, but it's a PC inside of it. It runs Steam. Yeah. It's running Steam OS, which is Arch Linux and KDE Plasma backend. I'm I'm very... I'm obscenely excited <laughs> for this. Um, and, and they're doing three different models. Uh, I don't I don't remember exactly what the... Low-end model is a 64 were. gigabyte EMMC. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other two up are NVMe M.2 drives. We assume they're soldered in... Mm-hmm. Uh, the Big Daddy one is a, a half a terabyte, I believe, yeah. NVMe uh, with expandable micro SD card storage. It's running an AMD uh, Zen 2 APU. It's it's we don't know all the details of the processor or right. or the specs in it yet because it's it's a custom chip. Right. Um, running at 1280 by 800 resolution, which is how it's going to run now PC games on a little uh, Zen 2 machine. Right. I'm very ex- I just I cannot contain my excitement <laughs> with the Steam Deck. <laughs> Cannot wait. Uh, sources confirmed that the current Big Picture interface will be replaced by the Steam Deck's new interface, which I'm okay with because Big Picture was kind of feeling sort of dated. Yeah, it kind of sucked um, when it came out, and uh, it's not, like, stopped sucking over the years. As a very regular Big Picture user, mm. it could use some updating. Yeah. Uh, and internal testing says they haven't found a game the Steam Deck can't handle, including... 2021 titles which is them just teeing the media up <laughs> to release top 10 games the steam deck can't handle articles later right. this year yeah seriously uh, and i don't know if we said it comes out uh starting in december most people are getting quarter one and quarter two 2022 um quote dates yeah. for their reservation although you can still reserve it last i yeah. checked it just puts you at the end of the line which i love how they're doing that right. i love the, and they also um um were big on like hey we don't want scalpers buying this so if you didn't buy a game on steam on your account before june right you cannot order within the first 48 hours which is great and as much as their entire server and pr- payment processing fucking crashed for over an hour and i couldn't get an order in uh and that was a train wreck they at least seemed to not want scalpers to buy it yeah. and they seem to be be battling that by saying hey look just get in the queue. Whenever we have one, we'll give you one. You can right. get in the queue now. The queue can be a bajillion people long, and, and when we make a bajillion, you'll get the bajillion and first one. Right. And and um, and the, uh, I did just check it. The uh, the expected availability for the 256 and 512 gig models are both still Q2 of 2022, uh, yeah. and the 64 gig model is listed as after Q2 2022. Yeah. For, for reservations. So I, I do think that the scalpers were able to get in and they have all opted for the 64 gig model, apparently. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I think it's because the 512 started, qu- that that one sold the fastest because yes. it started quoting way out immediately. Yeah. I got mine so I in assume... in less than 15 minutes and it's still telling me Q1 of 2022. Yeah. So I'm I'm very excited for this. Uh, M2 announced QQO. Q- 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 <laughs> Kyoku Tiger Heli for Switch and PS4, a collection of Toa Plan shmups. I only put that in the news because I wanted to hear you try to say it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Saturn. Uh-huh. That's what I'm here for. Scalpers are selling the OLED Switch and Steam Deck pre-orders for ludicrous sums of money, and I hope they get none of the money. Right. Um, also, you can report them on eBay. If anybody's ever looking for a fun afternoon activity, <laughs> just report um, pre-orders, because I don't think you're allowed to sell pre-orders on eBay. I don't believe you're supposed to, but they do. Yeah. Uh, Reggie fils is writing a book about his time at Nintendo, and I'm excited to buy it, put it in my toilet next to my Toru Iwata <laughs> book, and probably not read enough of it. <laughs> nice. At least you're uh, honest Xbox, with yourself. <laughs> Xbox Series. I know what I'm about. <laughs> Xbox Series XS has broken its one-month sales record and was the highest-selling console for June 2021. Good for them. Uh, Take Two is taking down fan mods for GTA San Andreas and Vice City after previously telling the modding community that they wouldn't because, of course, they did because it's fucking Take Two. Yeah. Uh, A warehouse of PS4s found in the Ukraine was being used as a FIFA loot box farm, (laughs) proving that if you're going to chain a bunch of computers together, you can do something productive other than mining crypto. You know, that also uh, hasn't EA said several times that that, uh, the FIFA loot box money has no real world value, and so therefore yeah. it isn't gambling. That's why it's not gambling, Zach, because you but, can't cash it out. Right, but if it, why, why then would somebody set up a a a, a farm to to 
to mine these things. How dare you <laughs> infringe upon that corporation's freedoms? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Bloomberg Law reports that the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing has filed a lawsuit against Activision Blizzard for discrimination. That's and that is the kindest way I've heard that said. This lawsuit is... One tremendous. It's again. It's being put forth by the state of California, following a two-year um, investigation. Following a two-year investigation. So, while yes, these are still technically allegations and complaints, um, the state doesn't normally go after a company after a two-year investigation if they've got nothing. And the allegations in this thing are dark. Yeah, they and depressing. They and they range up. from from uh, gross to absolutely abhorrent. It's uh, it's so really. It's, it's, I didn't think that somebody was going to top Ubisoft so quickly. I know. It's, I know. It's pretty. And I gross. feel like yeah, it's 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 very bad. If yeah. you uh, uh are okay reading extremely dark allegations, yeah. Um, and I have heard people talking about uh how these are the allegations, and so the actual nitty gritty details are usually worse and will come out later. So. <sighs> Chances are this isn't the end of it, and this is far from the worst of they, it. So they did is, they did explicitly mention the WoW development team a couple times in the allegations. Uh, yeah. Blizzard uh, as a whole was mentioned, and as was Activision Blizzard as a whole. And Activision's uh, PR response was also not real great. Uh, they yeah, their PR response was I would say uh, beyond upset. It was dismissive. It was, uh, is the worst part. Inflammatory, for me. dismissive. Uh, uh, Cause, cause it the, turns out, it turns out, when you accuse a company of doing something awful, they just come out and apologize and say that they'll investigate it internally, Ubisoft. But <laughs> when, when you show up with a lawsuit, they right. go, "We didn't do anything wrong. Fuck you." Yeah, that's interesting much how that happened. works, isn't it? That's yeah. so weird. Yeah. Um, uh, let's get to the topic at hand. Yeah, let's, <laughs> that was let's a lot wash of news. that off. This week we're talking hidden gems on the Game Boy, um, which is uh, it's like the Game Gear, but a little you know, a little less, a little less going on. You know, <laughs> it's just this little unknown handheld yeah. by this Japanese toy company. You, you might have heard. You of may it. have heard about it in our uh, Gunpei Gunpei Yokoi episode recently. That yeah, might have been the, the first time he you ever heard he did about the it. Ultra Hand and the Game Boy and the Love Tester yeah. and you know those little things. He yeah, did. all those little <laughs> unknown things. Um. I do want to uh, 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 give a note on scope. We I we are including the Game Boy Color because yeah. it's basically the same uh, damn system. Is it Saturn? It's not. It's basically the same system. There there are some some hardware differences between the two, uh, processor wise, uh, obviously graphically, um, and there are some games on the Game Boy Color that are not compatible with the uh, original Game Boy or Game Boy Pocket. True. But um, there are a lot of games that go back and forth, true. and the Game Boy Color library is so dramatically tiny compared to the Game right. Boy that. You kind of got. You kind of gotta. Also, I feel like, and this just might be my perception um, of playing as many Game Boy Color games alphabetically as I could, <laughs> uh, which it turns out I could play a lot. Um, it uh, uh, the Game Boy Color seems more rife with licensed shovelware <laughs> than the because the Game Boy. There's a lot of trash on it. That's true. But it's it's always kind of weird trash where you're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Game Boy Color, I played the Little Nicky licensed video oh, game. Oh, no. Why did you do that? I played for a long time. <laughs> uh, it almost ended up on this list. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. For people that don't remember, Little Nicky was a movie uh, starring Adam Sandler as Satan's kid. Yep. <laughs> it was so dumb. It had Rodney Dangerfield he, in it. He had to go track down his brothers and put them in a cup. I'm not joking. It's what the movie's about? Um, uh, it actually. Uh, uh, and I'm on a tangent now. Uh -huh. it, it played better than I thought. I was like Little Nicky the movie, and I was like, <sighs> "Yup." And uh, it plays okay. It's not the worst crap, but there's a lot of licensed trash on Game Boy Color. It's true. Um, so we're we're lumping it in. Also, this is our podcast, and we make the here. rules, so we're just going to... We're allowed! Yeah. We're also including the links! <laughs> uh, Hidden Gems, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, the links! It's weird the, that we didn't mention any links games, the though. The SG-1000. <laughs> That's everything in our Game Boy episode. Yeah, we didn't include any of those systems, because... Reasons? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah, no, I, I mean, it's just, it's just, I don't think that we're gonna get a hidden gems Game Boy Color because the library is just pretty small and the good stuff is real good and real well known. Yeah, 
I um, I almost did come up with a list that was all Game Boy Color, and I had to I had to erase some stuff and and go back to Game Boy. I, I tried. Um, I want to start us off with uh, already a uh, uh, shitty answer, and I'll admit it, but it's Balloon Kid. Mm-hmm. On the Game Boy, came out in North it's America 1990, Europe 1991, Japan 1992. This is developed by Nintendo R&D 1 and produced by Gumpe Yokoi. I've heard of him. So I know this is a first party Nintendo game. And so it shouldn't count. True. As we established, we don't like to do first party Nintendo games on Nintendo systems because, come on. Um, but I feel like a lot of the first party stuff on Game Boy is not well remembered, including Balloon Kid. Yeah. And I hear people talk about Balloon Trip, the black box NES game. Or Balloon Fight, pardon me, yes. uh, the Black Box NES game. But I don't ever hear anyone be like, oh, yeah, and then Balloon Kid, the the sequel. Balloon Kid is fucking great. So yeah. basically, it's Balloon Trip from Balloon po- Fight, um, the, the trip mode, mm-hmm. but longer and actually fun yeah. instead of being really not fun. And it has... I, I maintain that the Balloon Kid soundtrack might be the best soundtrack on the Game Boy, and that is really saying something because there are some legendary soundtracks on the Game Boy. This was by Hip Tanaka, mm-hmm. and it is stellar soundtrack. And I am upset that you did not mention that uh, the Japanese version is not called Balloon Kid. I, I didn't know that. It is called Hello Kitty World. Oh, uh, so it's a Sanrio game. Yes. Uh, I did not know that. No, I had no idea. Yeah, and, and also it was on Famicom, not on Game Boy. Oh, see now I want to play the Famicom one. Yeah, uh, they in fact Japan didn't get the uh, the handheld version until the Game Boy Color came out. They got mm. they got it in two thousand. Jeez, uh, I forget that the color bled into the the new millennium because sometimes I see Game Boy Color release dates in two thousand two thousand one, and I'm like, oh my god, what? <laughs> well, the, the Game Boy Advance didn't come out until uh, right two thousand two thousand three. No, it was, uh, um, was two thousand or two thousand one. Uh, was, was it that? I want to say it was oh one. Was the yeah. Game Boy Advance? Um, but Balloon Kid is just great. It's it's really cute and charming. Um, it it is for an early Game Boy game. It's it is fantastic because oh, yeah. a lot of early Game Boy games could not figure out how big to make the sprites and how big or small to make your viewing field. Right. You see this in the first Super Mario Land, oh, yeah. where everything's fucking microscopic. Yes. And then you go play like one of the early Ninja Turtles games on the system, and the sprites are enormous yeah, the size of the, the screen, screen. Yeah, but you can't see anything. Right. Uh, and Balloon Kid is just an early Game Boy game. It's a lot of fun. It's really cute and charming. Fantastic music, um, and and it just nails that that sprite scale, mm-hmm. which is hard to do on the game, especially early on. It was hard to do on the Game Boy, um, and it's just just a wonderful game. I highly highly recommend Balloon Kid. Nice. Uh, my first what game is going to be Didalian Opus. Okay. Uh, which uh, uh, came out in Japan as Bulkin Puzzle Road uh, in April of 1990. We got it in July of 1990. Uh, it was developed and published by Vic to- Tokai. Uh, this one I encountered, there was uh, one uh, like little hole-in-the-wall rental store in our town that rented Game Boy games, which was the weirdest mm-hmm. thing because most rental mm-hmm. stores didn't. Yeah, for people that weren't around for rental stores, which could be people that are... Uh like almost 30 depending on the region you were from right. which is just weird yeah. to think about um uh, uh or i guess probably early to mid 20s you know yeah, um, definitely early 20s they wouldn't have remembered it anymore but uh yeah r- r- rental stores didn't really rent handheld, handheld stuff yeah. like family kind video started ever? renting ds games mm-hmm. uh but that was still uncommon then uh, Around the 2000s, you'd see it a bit. So I feel like I saw a lot of PSP rental stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you did see some of um, that, too. But, like, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Gear, none no, of, the, none none of that. There were, that wasn't in rental stores. Yeah, but there was this one place in our town called Movies and Records that had Game Boy games for some reason. And Movies and Records? And they also did have Movies and Records. <laughs> they let you rent records, like albums. That's that's the weirdest bizarre. thing. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, we, we, uh, we went there one time instead of our normal uh, closer video store for some reason. And I was like, oh, Game Boy games. And I was looking through them, and and I see this one where the cover makes it look like it's this crazy, weird Egyptian strategy game or something. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, and I can't pronounce its name, and I don't know what the heck it is, so I'm going to rent this. And I get it home, and no, it's a block puzzle game. It's basically, <laughs> it's basically you just fit... Don't say Sokoban. Is it Sokoban? No, 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 no. It's not like that. It's more like Tangrams, where you just fit puzzle pieces into a puzzle to fill oh. a block. Only oh. the the pieces that you use are all like Tetris like, 
but bigger than Tetris pieces. So they're all like five mm-hmm. or six blocks. And, uh, and that's it. That's literally the entire game. And, and yep. I played so much of it. And then I, I finally uh, found a copy years later and I picked up after then by that point, I'd also played through it on an emulator in addition to yep. having rented it. <laughs> uh, and then I finally bought a copy and I got it home and I didn't put it in my Game Boy for years because I had emulators. Yep. And I finally put it in and realized the cartridge doesn't work anyway. So, oh, no. so I don't have a copy, but, uh, I do plan on, uh, it's one of those ones that if I encounter it, I'll probably pick it up cause it's still cheap somehow, probably yeah. because no one cares. I but, feel like most of the games on our list, most of them are still cheap. I, I, I put in a couple of expensive ones and I apologize <laughs> for that, but, but the majority of them yeah. are still cheap. Yeah. Uh, so if you do like little and they're simple... free if you have um, this thing called the internet, right? So, that's true. Uh, <laughs> but if you if you uh, if you uh, uh, do like little puzzly games, I do recommend checking out Didalian Opus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my next one is Galaga Destination Earth. Nice on Game Boy Color. Uh, it came out in only North America, as far as I could tell, on September twenty fifth, two thousand. Developed by Pipe Dream Interactive, and it's it's just a really fun fast version of Galaga with some good sprite work and like a pretty fun soundtrack. Um, it, it is for sure an interpretation of Galaga, mm. not a port. No, well, it is a port. Um, it's oh, a port I assume a it's a port of the game. PlayStation version. Right. right. Um, but it, it just plays really kind of differently than Galaga, but it's just a really fun, colorful uh, Galaga-like, if that's a <laughs> fra- phrase. Yeah. Um, it does add some horizontal scrolling because uh, obviously a Galaga playing field would be scrunched and tiny on your right. Game Boy. Although I can't remember if the PS1 version had horizontal scrolling or not. I don't recall. It may have. Um, but it's just a really fun, uh, like, sit down and blast some aliens kind kind of game. I feel like a few of my choices on this list are, like, <laughs> quicker to jump into. Like, I'm going right. to play for 10 minutes and then turn it off because that's how I always played the Game Boy. Yes, it was I like... Know. I'm going to play my Game Boy for 10 minutes, so I'm going to play Balloon Kid or I'd, I'd, my, I'd play Galaga. Right. Um, it's just it's just a really fun uh, uh, vertical shooter on the Game Boy Color, which there are not a, there are some notable ones, but uh, uh, not a ton of shooters on the system. Nice. Yeah. I, uh, my, my next choice will be Trip World, uh, which mm-hmm. did not come out over here in North America, which is why it is largely unknown over here. Mm-hmm. Um, it came out in, in Japan in November 92 in Europe sometime in 93, uh, but the system's region free. So whatever, you just find right. a copy. Um, it was developed and published by Sunsoft. We did mention this briefly in the Sunsoft episode or mm-hmm. episodes. Maybe I don't remember. Um, but it, it has the same kind of adorable mascot character design that, that Mr. Gimmick has. Uh, yes. so it has that same feel to it that, that Mr. Gimmick has visually, um, and, uh, the, the, the backgrounds and, and UI elements are all really impressive for an early Game Boy game, uh, which I guess it wasn't super early in 92, but still in the first half of the Game Boy's life. Right. Uh, but, but graphically it looks really good for the system. Uh, it is a platformer. You play as this character that can change f- forms between his standard, like platforming, running and jumping form and a flying or a fish form at any time just by holding up or down and pressing the B button. And mm-hmm. the the gameplay and mechanics completely change when you change form. Uh, and uh, because you can change form at any time, it opens up some of the, the navigation a lot more than it would in a standard platformer. Uh, you can also collect some kind of fruit or something to uh, to. Th- there's a few other power ups, but uh, the the first one that you get, you get this weird fruit looking thing. Maybe it's a nut uh, that makes your character grow a flower out of his head, mm-hmm. and then he throws seeds at enemies, which makes them also grow flowers out of their head, and then they become catatonic. <laughs> and, All right, that's weird. And you can push them around. You can push them off of a cliff. You can jump off of them, but then they wake up eventually. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's there's other power ups. You can get like an extendo tail. You can get a bouncy ball form. You can shrink down to a miniature form. Um, there's uh, uh, several forms. Uh, so it's it's got a, a bit of variety in the actual gameplay. And uh, the the thing that that I noticed about it back when I first played it is, aside from bosses, most of the enemies don't attack you unless you attack them first. Mm-hmm. Uh, they'll just run right past you, even if they touch you. It doesn't hurt you unless you have attacked them first. 
and then it yeah. will hurt you. Which interesting. Which makes me feel much worse when I do attack them. <laughs> It makes it feel. Could you not just bypass some of them? Oh yeah, you can. You can walk around most of them, um, yeah. but it makes the world feel much more peaceful, and and it it makes it feel like if you do decide to go about attacking things, you're the, you're asshole. the asshole. Yeah, yeah that's. <laughs> so uh, it's weird, uh, but if you do like weird platformers, it's uh, definitely worth checking out. I feel like that one is expensive, but I don't know because I haven't looked at it. I believe it is, but it's also regularly reproduced, especially since it didn't mm-hmm. come out over here in the first place. Yeah. And uh, very easily emulatable, obviously. Yeah. Um, my next one is Legend of the River King, which is where we get into Saturn would hate this territory, yes. which is basically the rest of my list. I've played this one, and I did hate it. Uh, this came out on the, it was one of those Game Boy, Game Boy Color cross-compatible games um, that was like the black cartridge that meant you could do it on either one. Well, they actually released a Game Boy only version of it and then later re-released it as oh, the cross-compatible. Because I believe even the sequel is that same cross-compatible yep. black cartridge. Right. Um, this was, uh, uh, came out in North America, August of 1998. Uh, Game Boy Color compatible version came out in 1999. Um, it was developed by Victor Interactive Software, published by Natsume. Lots of fun. And it's basically, what if the fishing minigame in your RPG was the whole game? <laughs> then I would I mean, cry. <laughs> That's what would happen. The, the game opens and it's like, hey, uh, you, we, you got to catch this legendary fish to save your dying sister. And you're like, okay, only way to do that is just fish my way up to it. And then you just go out and start <laughs> fishing forever. And it's just like a little top-down, cute, uh, a Game Boy fishing game. Yeah. Um, and the fishing is actually really fun. So you, you throw your line in the water, the fish grabs it, but when the fish grabs it, it's not like Animal Crossing style where you like press the button or whatever to pull it up. It cuts to an underwater scene of a big giant sprite of the fish and you'll see it. It'll start pulling on your line and when it pulls, you want to, you know, release the tension, like let off the button. Mm. And then when it slows down, you start reeling it in again. So it's it's got r- really great graphics for like a Game Boy fishing <laughs> game. But also you have gear, you upgrade your stuff, you go around to different areas and talk to NPCs. There are random battles yeah. where like a crow will just show up and attack you <laughs> and you have to beat the shit out of it. So just random woodland animals show up to fight you. And it also includes fish raising, meaning it doubles as a virtual <laughs> pet. Which means Saturn would extra hate it. I would. It. Uh, also, it's, like you, it's the fourth game in its series, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the earlier ones were um, Famicom, weren't they? Uh, Famicom, were they Famicom, Turbo CD, and Super Famicom. Yeah, uh, and just it's just a really fun fishing-based RPG. Um, and, and, and yeah, I, I highly recommend it. Uh, the, the actual virtual pet thing, the fish raising is weird, like... Mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be a little more interactive, but you, it just opens and it's like, Here, here's a fish. Do you want to feed it? And you're like, I guess. Would you like to reduce the amount of water in its tank? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. Do you want to feed it again? Yes, I do. Do you want to okay, touch you the ready fish? To, you ready? You know, you can't touch it. No. Are you ready to go back to the main menu now? And you're like, yep, sure am. <laughs> Um, but it's it's fun. Uh, uh, like a lot of, I would say probably most um, Game Boy RPGs, mm. it's very badly translated, yeah. very badly done. Oh, that was um, that was kind of Natsume's signature back then. Yeah, and that made it that makes it kind of extra fun. <laughs> like in the intro thing, it's like your sister is die. Please go find fish, and you're like, what? Like, what? <laughs> like I don't I don't remember what exactly what the t- the typo was, but like the first line was like a typo, and I was like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. Yeah. But I get fun. This one came out on 3DS Virtual Console as well. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, both so both of the uh, the two games that released over here came out on 3DS yeah. Virtual Console. Yeah, yeah. So just if very fun. If you don't, if you like fishing mini games, then, then why not play a fishing mini game RPG? No, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I also appreciate that I have trained so many people. Anytime they see the word Natsume, to follow it with lots of fun. Now that uh, <laughs> makes me feel good inside. Um, uh, my, my next time, and also I do think that, uh, uh, last I checked anyway, it could have changed over the years, but, uh, uh, River King on, on Game Boy Color was getting pretty pricey for a little while there. Oh, was it uh, really? The 3DS version may be cheap, but, uh, or the virtual console right. version rather is Yeah, I mean, that's just regular, cheap. uh, uh it's Game It's just Boy. an eShop game. 
Yeah, um, just stand, I, how much are eShop games or uh, Game Boy games on eShop? I want to say like, they were like five dollars ish. That sounds about oh, yeah, four ninety nine cents per hour. So, uh, yeah, uh, loose price for the Game Boy Color version of Legend of the River King is thirty seven. River King Two is thirty eight. I don't. I didn't play as much of River King Two. I don't know that it's head and shoulders better to mm. my recollection. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's I. I couldn't tell. You. I mostly played the first one. Yeah, it's not as expensive as uh, as it used to be, so that's good. Um, yeah, my next one is super expensive, and I apologize for that. Oh no, I didn't know that this one was super expensive when I was putting it on my list. It was just a game that I had played on an emulator fifteen years ago. Yeah. Um, and it's Wendy the Good Witch in every which way. <laughs> what? I'm ready for any judgment that that uh, puts. No, no, you know you like you. Uh, you do you. Yeah. So it's, uh, of course, based on the character from Casper the Friendly Ghost. Mm-hmm. I did not know that that was a character in Casper the Friendly oh, yeah, Ghost. Yeah, that's, but, a, that's uh, a character from the comics and the old cartoon. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, it, uh, it released in Europe in 2000, North America in August of 01. But it was made by WayForward, mm-hmm. who is known for good games. Yes, and, and licensed games. Yes, and uh, it was published by TDK Media Active, who is not known for good games. <laughs> no. Um, and, uh, and I ignored it when it came out just cause it looked like another generic platformer based on this ancient, uninteresting licensed property. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, a guy that I respected told me I should try it out and I thought he was fucking with me. Uh, but he was like, well, just emulate it. You know, it's, it's a fun little game. And I did. And it's, it's way better than it has any right to be. It's mm-hmm. just so uh, kind of way forward standard. Operating yeah, procedure pretty much. Then. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's basically a platformer, uh, but you can reverse gravity at any time just by holding up or down and, and jumping. And yeah. some of the enemies are affected by this. Some of them are not, uh, like slugs are stuck to the ground, so they don't, they don't flip, but like little knight looking dudes with swords, they'll flip with you. Um, you've got just a basic shot that she shoots with her wand and it can be powered up by collecting these stars, uh, that you lose if you take damage, but you can find, uh, up to five stars on every level, which gets you up to level five shots, which are huge and overpowered and make you feel good. Um, and then every time you start a new level, unfortunately, you revert back to zero stars, which, which kind of sucks. Yeah. Uh, the game is pretty short, so it doesn't overstay its welcome. Um, but it is uh, a lot of fun if you like platformers. Uh, obviously, I am a yeah. fan of platformers based on this list. Um, and and. <laughs> Like I said, it's weird. I think I have uh, multiple RPGs on my list. I don't think <laughs> you have any. Yeah, the the few RPGs that I played on the Game Boy uh, are well known games, so I did yeah. not include those. Um, but, but yeah, like I said, this one got way too expensive. A lot like WayForward's other Game Boy Color platformer, Shantae. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, play it on an, an emulator, play it on a flash cart. But uh, but it's worth worth playing if you enjoy platformers. I, I had yeah. more fun with it than I thought I would on a Casper the Friendly Ghost side character licensed game. It actually occurs to me, um, the majority of my list is RPGs because <laughs> Legend of the River King is an RPG. Yeah. And my next game, Ninja Boy 2, yeah. is, is an RPG. It was on the Game Boy. Uh, it came out in North America in 1992. Uh, Japan, November 29th, 1991, as... Um, Super Chinese Land 2. Sweet. Uh, and for, <laughs> a, for people a... who don't know, the Chinese Land games are, are a long-running series in Japan. There's a lot of them. Um, in North America, we probably mostly recognize them as, uh, or I always mostly recognize it as uh, Kung Fu Heroes on NES was one of the, the those games in that I, series. I believe... I believe uh, uh, Super Chinese Land was actually a spinoff of Super Chinese, which was the name of Kung Fu Heroes on NES. Is that what it is? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all one connected universe. Yes. Um, with named characters, the names are Ryu and... Uh, I, was just, I wanted to just say Ryu and Ken. It's not that. <laughs> it's, uh, I forget the other one's name now. Um, but, but the first Ninja Boy game was basically Kung Fu Heroes in handheld form. It right. was another one of the games in that series that was pretty much just, hey, look, it's Kung Fu Heroes. Right. Um, and I love Kung Fu Heroes. Yeah. I have so much love <laughs> for that not particularly fantastic game which is the most mean thing I'll ever say about it. <laughs> um, but Ninja Boy 2 is an RPG. I believe it's Jack and Ryu. I'm uh, it Jack now. and Ryu, yeah. yes, thank you. Uh, Ninja Boy 2 is an RPG, except that the random battles are just Kung Fu Heroes battles. <laughs> 
So you 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 walk around the overworld and it's like, oh, you're in a random battle, and it opens up a menu and it's like, do you want to fight or run? Or they call it like rumble. They're like, do you want to rumble? Um, and and I'm like, oh, I guess I get I I, I, I guess I want to rumble, <laughs> and I'm expecting a menu to pop up, and it's like, nope, Kung Fu Heroes now you get to do this. <laughs> um, and it's just, it's so weird. It it's kind of seems like I translated it. It's act, <laughs> it's it's translated so dramatically bad that yeah. you're like, I I don't I don't even know what you're trying to say. Did, did Culture Boy put this out themselves over here or Culture Brain rather? Culture Brain. Um, I want to say they did, uh, but well, I'm that not would totally explain sure the if, translation because I I, uh, I don't uh, know that they actually had a Western staff. <laughs> I don't believe they did. Going by this game, they did not. <laughs> Um, they just had one beat to heck uh, uh, dictionary, <laughs> right. and that was all they had. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just really weird and bizarre. Huh. But it is a full on RPG with towns, and you walk around, and there's random battles, and weird. there's gear that you buy. Um, I I don't know if it's good, <laughs> but you know, but it's definitely did, just so different and interesting. Did the uh, did the Super Nintendo game have those same random battles? Ninja Boy and Super Nintendo? Yeah, yeah, Super Ninja I Boy. I don't. I think Super Ninja Boy was just a straight platformer, if it? I remember okay. right. Uh, uh, I believe it was. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I remember that one being a, uh, just a platformer. I okay. could be misremembering. I remember it being a good one. Really, all the games in, in this series that I've played, I've very much enjoyed. Huh. And one day I need to sit down and actually explore the, the franchise <laughs> that I keep touching on here and there and finding stuff and going, oh, this is interesting. <laughs> Um, but Ninja Boy is two is just it's just so weird. You have to play it. Nice. Um, uh, unless you're Saturn, you would hate it because um, <laughs> you're like, all right, here comes my RPG, and you're like, now you do a brawler, and you're like, no, oh, I made it through all of Yakuza like that. See, there, you know what? Yeah, I would say, I would say, <laughs> this is uh, proto Yakuza, proto Yakuza. Yeah, <laughs> it's Yakuza before Yakuza. Nice. Weird translation, <laughs> strange places, strange goings on, and when you get into a random battle, you're just playing a brawler. So, nice. if you like Yakuza, you'll love Ninja Boy too. There, I said it. That's my, that's my take. Nice. Uh, this one, I feel like, uh, uh, should have been expected of me is Penguin Wars. Mm -hmm. uh, I had mm -hmm. to put Penguin Wars on here. Came out in Japan in March of ninety. Uh, over here in July of nineteen ninety, it was later released in uh, Europe uh, as King of the Zoo by Nintendo. Uh, um, I think that's the name of a Kevin James movie. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> it's based on this game. Okay, uh, yeah, right. <laughs> the, uh, the movie adaptation of Penguin <laughs> Wars, starring Kevin James. <laughs> the uh, the console version and handheld version was developed by ASCII and published in North America by Nexoft and in Europe by Nintendo. It was based on the 1985 game Penguin Coon Wars by UPL, um, and and I've probably talked about it on the show before. So it's a game where you play as a penguin, mm -hmm. and you are in a uh, tournament with other animals like tigers and pandas and koalas and stuff you know normal yes, i know what other other animals are i'm aware of them oh those are the Thank ones you. that i immediately remember in okay. the game there's not a ton of them it's not a big game right um so so you uh you're competing with them and basically you're you're put in front of what looks like a table tennis table uh-huh only there's no net there's just a line on the the board and uh you throw balls at each other only you, they don't Ex they don't throw they just kind of roll them across the table explain to me mm -hmm. how this is not pong with extra steps so you have 10 balls on each side of the board uh, each player has 10 balls and as many of them can be in play at a time as fast as you can throw them there can be like 10 balls on oh, the okay. ball on the board all at once and they can ricochet off of each other and they bounce off the sides of the arena and if you hit the other player with a ball, they get stunned for a moment. Uh, however, they're all controlled by computers and you're not. So you're way more likely to get hit by a ball. Um, yeah. And uh, it, it, the there's a timer. It's a 60 second timer for every stage. And whoever either has uh, if you have zero balls on your side and there are no balls in play, you instantly win. Doesn't matter how much time is left. Uh, otherwise, whoever has the least balls when the time runs out is the winner because you want yeah. them to be stuck with them. Uh, halfway through the time, this like walking jelly bean shows up and just like goes back and forth in the middle of the board just to bounce balls right. at you. As you'd expect. Yeah. You know, normal <laughs> shit. Um, 
so it's it's weird and it's dumb and it's just the the simplest competition there is but man i have poured way too many hours into this into every yeah. version of it but this for the longest time was the only version available uh outside of japan uh it, without having to navigate through japanese menus uh fortunately there is now a ps4 and switch remake which brings almost nothing to the table except for new graphics <laughs> Right. Uh, but it is $40. So it does bring uh, that to you the get table. The original game for $11 still. So. Yes. The, the original game is dirt cheap. Uh, if you if you still have a Game Boy or something that can play Game Boy games, uh, I say give it a shot. I want to say it even supported Game Link for multiplayer, but I never met another human being with Penguin Wars. So yeah. I can't say I ever tested that, but I would like to. Uh, my next game, or my final game, yeah. is another RPG. It's called Metal Walker. Yeah. Uh, it came out in North America February 6, 2001, Japan, December 24th, 1999. Uh, and it is it is basically a weird dystopian sci-fi RPG with, like, monster collecting mechanics. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like sci-fi Pokemon, except the battle system is, uh, like, Kirby's dream course. <laughs> <laughs> so, nice. It's very weird. Yeah. So you get these, like, so you, you, you're thrown into the battle, and your robot... You, you know, and there's enemies in, in it's on this like playing field and you do it like Kirby's dream course style huh. where you point in the direction you want to go and you like charge up a power meter and you fire him and like a, like on a pool table, he bounces around the walls and when you hit the other enemy, you deal damage to them. But what complicates things is you equip these items that will randomly pop up on the battlefield uh -huh. that do things like let you do special magic attacks or give you health. Huh. So you're constantly trying to like peggle your way around <laughs> this battlefield to bounce off the stuff you need and hit your enemy or, okay, well, I'm in a bad spot, but look, this special uh, item just popped up over here. And if I get that, it'll drop a big rock on my enemy and huh. kill them. It's just very weird and very interesting um i somehow missed this all together i don't i don't even remember what the box looked like it's so bizarre huh. uh it's just completely bizarre um and the whole thing is this like mad max post-apocalyptic <laughs> type of setting uh but cute <laughs> you know because it's a game boy game right and it's just really fun and different and interesting nice. um if you like you know like mini golf games or pool games like Kirby's Dream Course, you yeah, know, yeah. stuff like that. Um, which I, I, Kirby's Dream Course feels the closest in like actual physical gameplay yeah. because Kirby's Dream Course is kind of that weird in between pool and mini golf sort of land. Right. Um, if you like that kind of game and you just want it to maybe be in full on RPG, <laughs> then it's there. It's Metal Walker. Nice. And it's, it is so weird and fun. Um, uh, uh, it, it, the cover of it is it, in, in it's, it's, it was put out by, um, uh, Capcom. Oh. And the cover of it looks like one of those weird, like late nineties, like, uh, uh, 12 year old action kids TV properties. <laughs> it's very strange. Bizarre. Um, I've never heard anyone talk about it either. I literally just found it going alphabetically through Game Boy games. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's. It's a good time. Nice. I I like it quite a bit, and nice. you should play it. <laughs> yeah, for uh, I'm also going to use a Capcom game as my last game, mm -hmm. and it almost feels like a cop out because the the title of it sounds like a very popular common game. I actually almost put this on my <laughs> list because I had it and played a ton of it, and yeah. I was like, that was a really good version of that game. Yeah. And I'm glad you did because I already put Balloon Kid, which is first party <laughs> Nintendo. So this can be your cop out right. game on yeah. your hidden gems. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to use Street Fighter Alpha because mm -hmm. when people think about what platform do I want to play Street Fighter Alpha on, I doubt the Game Boy is the top of their list. Specifically, uh, the color. It, this one was only on Game Boy. Yes, color, this was Game Boy Color. We, there, there was one that was original Game Boy. It was Street Fighter um, Two on original just Game Street Boy. Street Fighter Two, right? Yeah, yeah, and Street Fighter Two was actually Super Street Fighter Two, but missing some characters. Yeah, uh, and it was an okay port, and it supported the Super Game Boy, so you could do uh, a player versus player on one system, mm -hmm. uh, which was neat. But it was still kind of janky and and kind of floaty. But Street Fighter Alpha on the on the Game Boy Color. Um, uh, first uh, published in March of 2000 developed by Crawfish uh, it was it's really good like it feels like Street Fighter Alpha um, if there's anything that is wrong about it it's that you don't have enough buttons 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you just have one punch and one kick, and the strength of it is... Uh, for years, I thought it was just determined at random, but it's actually based on how long you press the button. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, you can still pull off pretty much any move that you're trying to pull off, just like you would in the, the yeah. normal versions. Uh, and the animation is incredibly fluid. Uh, they, Like you mentioned earlier, how some games have two big sprites or two small sprites. They picked the yeah. right balance where the sprites are the right size and you can see enough of the playing field. They're not as detailed as they would have been on something that wasn't an 8-bit handheld with a tiny resolution. <laughs> Right. But they still are recognizable enough that you can tell what character they are. Uh, was Alpha the one? Because I'm pretty sure it was Alpha that I played mm-hmm. uh, with with uh, Sodom in it. Yeah. With his original name. Because I'd always known him as Katana because right. they changed his name in the, the real version of Alpha. And I remember being like... Uh, uh, well, they changed his name on the Super Nintendo version of Alpha. Right. Uh, uh, and, and I remember being like, why does this guy have a different name? <laughs> well, the, it, I think they left him untranslated on both the PlayStation and Saturn versions of Alpha and Alpha 2. Saturn? I didn't have a PlayStation <laughs> Saturn. I didn't even know what a Saturn was. I was like, a what? Weird. <laughs> but yeah. Um, um, but yeah, yeah they, so I played a ton of Street Fighter Alpha, yeah. and it it is really good. Right? It was actually the Street Fighter game I would played the most of <laughs> until probably Street Fighter 4. Weird. Um, now, yeah. <laughs> now uh, uh, another thing is that's weird about it is Capcom called it Street Fighter Alpha in Japan as well. Mm-hmm. That's the Alpha series isn't Not, called Alpha. It's in called Japan. Zero, in right? Japan. They've all been called yeah. Zero, but this one Game Boy Color port was called Street Fighter Alpha over there. And I always wonder if maybe they just wanted to distance themselves from it in case it wasn't as good. But right, I thought it turned out great. I was really impressed with it. Um, however, I always remember the first time that I tried it was on an emulator before I even saw it in a store. And, right. uh, and so this would have been months after it came out uh, real, real shortly after it came out. Cause I was still in high school. Um, and, and we loaded it up on my emulator and a friend of mine always played fighting games with me and we, he was the the clear winner in our group when it came to fighting games but he had the mm-hmm. world's most bizarre button configuration for every game it could never be standard and so when he I always had a friend like that right? he was really good at stuff yeah. and he would always be like oh I need to go customize the controls right. and be like what are you doing yeah and it's just you, weird why shit why is your stick mapped to a button yeah, like right. what you... and and so when I when I found this and I was like, oh, this is surprisingly good. I was like, hey, man, come check this out. And I show it to him. The first thing he does is, oh, I got to customize my buttons. And he goes into the options menu and swaps A and B. And I'm like, dude, you motherfucker. <laughs> no, 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 you need kick over here. Right. That's, how the real, that's how the pros do it. Yeah. You know? Um, I'm, I'm actually glad that you put this on here because I I have not. When I was I was like, I need to put Street Fighter Alpha on there. I was like, no, I already have a cop out answer. <laughs> um. And then my next thought was, I actually don't want to play it because I enjoyed it so much that I'm worried it's terrible and <laughs> I'm just misremembering because I played it as a kid. You right. know, I was 12 when I when I when it came out. Yeah. You know, I was um, I was so, yeah. uh, 18 at that point. So I'm uh, I, yeah. I I feel like I and also I had played a shit ton of every version of Street Fighter already by that point. Right. So so I had some uh, uh, gauge or something to gauge it off of. Um, let's do honorable mentions. Yeah. I've got a few. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, my first one is Monster Rancher Battle Card GB, mm-hmm. which is a Game Boy Color card battling game. Yeah. No, not that one. The <laughs> one with Monster Rancher characters. Oh, boy. Of Pokemon characters. Cause I, it's funny. Um, when we said we're doing Hidden Gems Game Boy, um, I had multiple people be like, yeah, do Pokemon the trading card game. Yeah. And in my head, I was like, okay, yeah. And I look it up, and it's like one of the top selling Game Boy games right. of all time. It I is. I mean, like in like the top 10. Oh, yeah. Um, but if you're looking for like a real, and what I like about Monster Rancher as compared to Pokemon is in Monster Rancher, you're battling a team of monsters mm. instead of just an individual monster at a time. Do you, which do you get to, uh, do you get to put CDs in the Game Boy to generate monsters? You can put CDs in your Game Boy for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, my next one is Quest RPG. Oh God! Which is like the adventure of Brian yeah, or it was something. Yeah, Brian's like that. journey or some shit. <laughs> oh, I like this. This is a pretty fun little like. Uh, uh, you were the one who RPG. liked this. I see. Um, okay, <laughs> Quest sixty four is not as bad as people say it is. It is All right. It is. I am a Quest sixty four defender. Gross. And what? <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. Um, the Game Boy Color game really it plays way different. Yeah. Um, it's 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 fun. It's kind of more strategic. I, I have um, heard that a, it's a much better game than Quest. Yeah, it's it's just a fun people. little um um kind of uh semi strategy RPG. Mm-hmm. Um, my next one is is I kept wanting to put Nemesis on the list, and I was like, no, <laughs> Nemesis is a well known <laughs> game. This is Gradius, but it's on Game Boy. Yeah. But I did find a game called Starhawk. Mm. Uh, which is just a really fun shmup, and there are not enough shmups on the Game Boy, and so uh, I've got Galaga on my list, and I want Starhawk to be out there, and I'm just going to go ahead and say Nemesis, play, play yeah, Nemesis yeah. on the Game Boy that, as well. It's very good. Uh, both of the the Nemesis or Gradius games on Game Boy are excellent. Ports. Also Proteus on Game Boy. Yes, very also good. very good. Um, so I'm going to start with another fighting game after having already done Street Fighter Alpha. I'm going to do Battle Arena Toshinden, mm-hmm. which... Uh, feels like an earlier version of what SNK did with uh, the Neo Geo Pocket Color. Yeah. Because it's all super chibi characters compared to mm-hmm. the not chibi characters on PlayStation and Saturn. Uh, and uh, unlike the PlayStation and Saturn games, which were very early 3D polygonal fighting games, uh, this is a 2D fighter. And it kind of plays like a chibi Capcom fighter on a Game Boy. And it's surprisingly mm-hmm. decent. Uh, for a, a series that most people have uh, intentionally forgotten over the years, yeah. Uh, but it, yeah. it it's it's actually pretty good. Uh, the other one is the Game Boy sequel of Adventures of Lolo, which now is this superior to the NES version? Uh, it's it's just more puzzles of the same game. So it's <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, people who are into these kind of games, they don't need advancement. They just need additional maps. They just need more of yeah. it. Yes, please, um, more of it. And uh, this one was never released in North America either. It was only in Japan and Europe, and so. Uh, a lot of us here in North America that were fans of the series never even knew there was a Game Boy game. So it was like 10 years after it came out when I discovered it and was like, there's more Lolo maps I can play. <laughs> uh, so if you are already a fan of uh, of Lolo or of, you know, Sokoban-esque games, uh, definitely, mm-hmm. definitely give it a shot. Um. As far as final thoughts, uh, the, the, the Game Boy and by extension the Game Boy Color re- really just has tons and tons of game on it the ga- if, of games if on you there. include the game boy color even if you don't include the game boy yeah. color the game boy library is just fucking enormous yeah, i want to say it's it's, it's about a thousand games without game boy color it is ma- and i think it, i don't know it's just massive there are s- so many of them because i played a lot <laughs> of game boy games for this episode <laughs> trust me a lot yeah um, many of them are just kind of shy of greatness, but still have really cool, interesting ideas like Ninja Boy 2, like Metal Walker, where it's like, no, this isn't quite as good as like Link's Awakening or Pokemon or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's pretty darn good yeah. for a Game Boy game and interesting, you know, so th- there's a lot of really cool ideas in Game Boy games that you don't see elsewhere that I've not seen anywhere else that are worth checking out. You also, know, so get- I, I, I would say that it's it's a thing where uh, they they had to work within the limitations of the hardware, and so right. it, it brought about some interesting creativity that, Absolutely. that they never had the a reason Because the Game Boy was old else. when it came out. Right. And we're talking way into it yeah. uh, uh, in, in for most of these games. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, get out there and play some weird sci-fi mini golf and fishing RPGs. Right. I mean, <laughs> why not? What do you have to lose? <laughs> Nothing. That that's what. You know, I would also like to take note uh, because you had mentioned that that some people had uh, mentioned the Pokemon trading card game, right? Uh, Which again, and my in knee jerk reaction is like, oh yeah, I mean that was kind of like not. And then I looked it up and I was like, oh never mind, that yeah. was extremely well, yeah, very very popular. Uh, so. I, I did a, a quick lit, uh, look online of some of the hidden gems lists just to make sure that I wasn't just verbatim copying people. And right. a lot of those hidden gems lists for Game Boy list things like Kid Icarus, Kid Dracula, Mega Man, Donkey oh, Kong boy. 94, uh, Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, Metal Gear Solid. I, yeah. I'm starting to get concerned that maybe no one has played the Game Boy before. Here's the thing. If you're talking about Game Boy and it is not Tetris or Pokemon. Right. It's a hidden gem. Apparently. No one's heard of that. No one fucking played. No one with the Game Boy had that shit. Right. You know. However. Most people I knew that had a Game Boy, they had a Game Boy mm -hmm. and they had Tetris and or Pokemon. (laughs) And then they had just like four or five games that were just random garbage that sucked. Yeah. See, most most of the people I knew with Game Boys was before Pokemon released. So Mm -hmm. uh, nobody had that. So it was just random trash. It was Tetris, maybe Super Mario Land and random trash. And so we learned about all kinds of random trash Game Boy games by just 
borrowing and trading and stuff. Uh, however, yeah. uh, because of the research for this episode, I learned that some of the games that I enjoyed on my Game Boy in the early 90s are mm-hmm. actually complete trash. Yes, uh, I'm right there with you. These are, uh, I guess, dishonorable right? mentions. Yeah, the, the, the two that I absolutely have to mention because I'm worried that maybe I accidentally recommended them on a previous episode mm-hmm. are uh, Wizards and Warriors 10, which is just a shit trash game, and mm-hmm. also The Simpsons Escape from Camp Deadly, which is a worse shit trash game. My dishonorable mention is all the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater games on Game Boy. <laughs> I played so much, and in my head, I'm like, they're fucking great. Also, Pong. I've recommended uh, Pong on Game Boy maybe recently. a dozen times. Oh, uh, it turns out it's just Pong. Yeah, it, it, recently you have recommended both of those I things. know, all right! <laughs> I'm eating crow. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, that's our uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Color Hidden Gems. That's all uh, the Game Boy games. That's all of we mentioned every Game Boy game of note. That was I don't all know what 2000 Pokemon is. <laughs> Please. Uh, anyway, uh, if you would like to uh, be a hidden gem in our heart, <laughs> then you can go over to <laughs> patreon.com slash retro warriors where you can support the show. Is that what we're doing um, now? That's what we're doing now, uh, uh, we, and we would appreciate it if you did. Um, also, you can rate review us on your podcast aggregator of choice. It does make a big difference for the show. Also, we and have we would website. love to have you. We have a website, RetroWarriors.net, where you can find uh, links to all of our stuff. We have a red bubble in the show notes. And we want to thank the following patrons for making this specific episode possible, starting with Joe Frankum and Zargon. Devious Dave's Dildo Dynasty. <laughs> Kevin Meyer. Retronauts does adventure game <laughs> episodes. I don't care if Retronauts does it. We're not Retronauts. Uh, Retro Video Game Zone, Jason. Justin made me buy two CRTs. <laughs> Todd Bass. The Butt Witch. And Jurgen. Are all the wonderful patrons that make this show possible, and we thank them from the bottom of our hearts. And we Indeed. also want to thank Guy, who's here. He's going to be here in just a minute, so stay tuned after the ending theme. Uh, for uh, what do we call it? The after party <laughs> is, is what we call it. We've been calling That's it that for like two years, and you're still the asking name every time. Of the segment. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week, and as always, let, let us, us cling, cling together. together. Welcome to the after party with hey. uh, Guy. Hi, Guy's guy. here. Hi, Guy. Hi, me. <laughs> I like that every time we do it, we're, we're like in unison, like, hi, Guy. Hey, oh, my, my, how's it going? <laughs> oh, every, dude. Every time. That's because we're excited that not each other is here to talk to. <laughs> Speaking of uh, uh, in unison, I was on the way back from eating dinner today listening to Talking Wizards, mm-hmm. and you, Justin, uh, clearly not Saturn, but you, oh, Justin, no. said, "Oh no," said, uh, "Yeah, no, it's been a long time." And I, at me, at the same time as Andrew went, "How long was it?" <laughs> <laughs> it was like perfectly in sync. It's like, nice. goddamn it! <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, nice. It's great. What do you what do you uh what do you got for us this month? Uh, I feel like we, I feel like I always say this month. I don't even know if we do this monthly. I don't actually do any of the timings of when you're on the show. Yeah, it's every, probably I pretty just, close to monthly. It's every four episodes, I, so you might. I get just like trust two of them that you July. guys. Uh, like if you were on every other episode, I wouldn't even notice. <laughs> I'd be like, oh yeah, that seems right. If you say so, like I don't. <laughs> so bad. I just trust you. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, maybe then I would be included in your little praise messages that you send in private chat. <laughs> What? Well, so what's going? On? Yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> you sent you sent a screenshot of 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 a listener who was like, "Thank you, Justin and Saturn, for making the oh. best show ever." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, okay, fine." Um, <laughs> and they are welcome. Right? They are welcome. Yeah. No. Um, uh, notes from this episode. The only other note I have from this episode is Justin. You said Reggie fils May is writing a book, and I'm excited to put it in my toilet. <laughs> yeah, my toilet. In your bathroom, not in the toilet. 
Well, okay, so I have one of those bathrooms. <laughs> I call it a poop closet um, because... Is there a knife in there? <laughs> Let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> Got a poop knife in there? Let me explain. <laughs> Um, my bathroom is um, it's a master bathroom because mm-hmm. uh, I'm the master of my bathroom, <laughs> and it has two sinks uh, because uh, me and my wife have separate sinks and right. stuff. Uh, anyway, um, it's one of those where like the toilet is not in the main bathroom area with all the ba- the sink and the bathtub and everything. Right. It's in its own little poop closet that you go into poop. Yeah. Uh, so I keep. Uh, what if a you needed to pee of, instead? I keep a little pile. Well, no, you pee in the other toilets. Oh, okay. Um, cause this toilet's farther away from everything else in the house, like the fridge and the living room. <laughs> so you only really go into it to poop. You okay. go in there for, for solace. I got you. to read a magazine and to poop in peace. He's got a so urinal on the other side of the poop closet so he can <laughs> poop and pee at the same time. So it's the, it's, God damn it. <laughs> is that how you're supposed to do that? <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, I've been doing it wrong. <laughs> it's, uh, nice. It's good. It's uh uh so it's my toilet so I I call it the toilet uh, more than I call it the bathroom. Well, right, a, well, the the name of the the fixture in there is also called the toilet, so they the you can understand why there would be confusion. Yeah, it sounds like you're just gonna buy Reggie's book and flush it down the commode. <laughs> right, that's true. The when toilet. You, when you phrase it that way. Yeah. Well, you know, I own it's mine. That's yeah, true. Maybe I won't like it, and I want to flush and, it down the toilet. And once you've bought it, you know, he's already gotten the money, so it's fine. <laughs> That is true. Yeah. What is? He, what does he fucking care? I'm like so <laughs> mean. Um, you already got your money, Reggie. <laughs> God. Uh, he's crying himself to sleep. Right. <laughs> with yeah. all the money. Uh, yeah. On sacks of money. yelled at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's listening to this show right now. Hi, Reggie. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Reggie. Can't wait to read your book. It's gonna go in my toilet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I want to talk about Blizzard because fuck them. Mm. Oh yeah, that was that's that's rough, man. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a, rough. I mean, you guys covered it real well during the episode, and I don't have anything more to yeah. add. You know, from from the standpoint of you know getting well, into other specific than just allegations being, or anything, other right. than just being really upset because I mean, you you were probably the biggest Blizzard fan of currently yeah. that I know personally. Everyone else has been like, yeah, I kind of fell out after this or that and and or whatever. Um, I was personally looking forward to buying Diablo 2 Remake. I'd kind of been flip-flopping, and I was like, well, Activision's been kind of not quite as shitty lately. Maybe I, it wouldn't kill me to give them 40 bucks for a game that I know I'm going to love. Right. Um, and I know you, you're you a huge StarCraft 2 guy. Like, you play, like, real-deal competitive StarCraft 2. Yeah. And Hearthstone. And Hearthstone. I've been playing uh, a lot more recently. I've been playing both Hearthstone and MTGA Arena. Whatever you call it. Yeah, and uh, a mutual friend of ours has been getting really into Hearthstone as well, and I have a feeling he's going to probably um, not want to support uh, Activision anymore. Yeah. yeah, like, it's, I mean, we, I was over at your house when we found we found out the news, um, mm-hmm. and, and I kind of expressed some concern at, at that point, and, and, you know. Right. Our, our mutual friend that was there was like, well, I am, I'm definitely never going to support Blizzard again, you know, and right. immediately yeah. took in, some in, action. In, <laughs> And to be clear, I mean, at this point, again, it, it is a complaint. Right. There are uh, allegations. But again, the state does not perform a two-year investigation yeah. and then go forward with a lawsuit against a company this large right. when they have nothing. Yeah. Right. Well, like, and that's, know, that's part of what I wanted to, to kind of bring to the discussion for, for our listeners who don't know how, you know, the legal system works or whatever. Yeah, because you do. I forget you were talking in the chat because... Uh, like Saturn and I know what we know from Law and Order and presumably <laughs> Night Court. That's about as much as we know <laughs> about the law. And you were talking about like law stuff, and I was like, oh yeah, forget guy works in uh, uh, law related stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. Um, you know, and and I work in the, in the legal process. You're a basically. judge. No, no, not a judge. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't actually know what you school. do. I just assumed you were a judge. Um, you know, but it's. It's one of those things where, like you said, uh, that, that, you know, these are allegations and, and what could come out is 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 probably going to be worse. Um, and just to kind of fill people in, like, I guess what I want to say was, yeah, the allegations are, you know, what they've been able to get voluntarily through through investigation and talking to people that are that are willing to talk to them. Right. Um, yeah. You know, they have some police reports that I'm sure that they got, you know, through Freedom of Information Act requests and things of that nature. Right. Um, 
but now they now that they filed the lawsuit, they have the power to uh, subpoena you know, stuff, subpoena stuff, and request specific documents related to all these allegations that they they've put in this lawsuit. And mm-hmm. through that process, now they're going to have access to all the confidential information that you know Activision and Blizzard have that are relevant to you know sexual harassment. And if they make that yeah. request broad enough. Uh, there's all sorts of things that can come to the light that that'll spin off, you know, further lawsuits or possibly criminal investigations, all sorts yep. of crap. And it's, I mean, this is just getting started. So it's, it's yeah. interesting. It'll be interesting to see where it goes as bad as it already is. It's probably going to be worse. That's, that's horrifying, honestly, because yeah. what we've already seen and read is just absolutely devastating and disgusting. And uh, yeah, I, and I, I do want to admit, and I know we've mentioned it before, you know, we all have our own, um, 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 you know, moral duty sure. to what we want to and don't want to support. And right. I want to say that anyone out there that wants to spend their money the way they see fit, yeah. you're free to do so. And I would never judge you for buying an entertainment product right. from a company that I find morally abhorrent. You know, um, um, I I might not like that company, right. but you are a consumer buying what makes you happy. And Absolutely. it is always okay to do that. So I don't want anyone to feel like I'm like, you, well, you need to quit buying Activision. <laughs> well, do I wish you would? Yes, I do. <laughs> On a personal level, I wish you would. But I would not uh, shame you or think less of you if you chose not to. That said, mm-hmm. um, I'm, 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 Diablo 2 Remake is out for me. I, I don't, I'm, I've uninstalled <laughs> Call of Duty Mobile, which I was kind of starting to really enjoy. Um, uh, I'm, it's just, I, I don't, at this point, I'm so frustrated that i don't even want activision to be able to list me as an active user on anything whenever they go to do their big bonuses for all their executives and go look how many active users we have as an argument you know what i mean i um like that's how upset i am i had already kind of sworn off activision just because of bad behavior that's unrelated to this much worse behavior (laughs) Uh, I had as well. Um, I know uh, I had gotten the uh, um, I got the Activision Humble Bundle like a, a year or two ago, whenever that was. So I paid like twelve dollars for that. I got the um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater remake. That was purchased for me. Andrew bought that for me for my birthday. But then I did I did give him ten dollars for the the Series X upgrade version mm-hmm. of it. You know, I think that's the only Activision Blizzard money I've spent in recent years i i own overwatch but again andrew bought that for me the only <laughs> only thing i've bought from them in many years is that uh that blizzard classic arcade yeah and yeah i remember that I, I, I was gonna pick that up too and yeah. then i was like wait i don't like any of these games <laughs> yeah and then i guess also uh the that most recent uh, semi-expansion to starcraft 2 which was even that was a couple of years ago when i bought that so um, yeah oh yeah, yeah those, I, those extra missions yeah yeah uh the the ones with nova mm-hmm. um but yeah, it, so for me, it's easy to just say, "Oh, I'm not going to support them anymore" because I barely right. purchase any of their shit anyway. So, yeah. so I don't, well, so I'm, I don't judge anybody if they're a super diehard fan of these games if they yeah. choose to continue to 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 buy this stuff. Um, I I I have a hard time doing so at least until uh, if they at least came out and and apologized and said they were going to change their behavior, then then yeah, I could probably consider. Well, I mean, it, I get it. There's a lawsuit levied against them, and right. the the smart thing to do is to not put out any press that admits any wrongdoing. Right. Um, even though the morally right thing to do is to put out press that admits your wrongdoing. Right. Um, but the, it wasn't even just them saying like, hey, you know. Uh, we have nothing to say at this time. You know, obviously, uh, uh, you know, we don't believe these allegations or whatever, and we'll see you in court. That's all they had to say. Right. Uh, but, and they chose to come out with their shitty, shitty yeah. PR response. I mean, it's right up there with you guys have phones, don't you? Yeah. I mean, it's. are we shocked? Is anyone shocked at this point? It's, no, it's, I, I'm not even it's shocked. It's a depressing at, situation. At, well, I guess I'm shocked at, at, at what, you know, the, the allegations. What transpired. What, what allegedly transpired. Right. 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 But not particularly surprised. Like, I told my girlfriend about it, and she was like, yeah, yeah. that's kind of video game development culture i thought everybody knew that yeah and and yeah, what's these, what's yeah. extra disappointing is all the people who have come out to defend it to be like yeah. well these uh, that's yeah. that's just a, a boys club and people should know better if they're gonna work there that's yeah that's really disgusting that's yep. it's been rough uh, guy i do wonder um you uh because you know normally when when stuff comes out about a company that you don't want to support anymore because for whatever reason honestly there are tons of reasons to choose to quit supporting a company with your money and right. it's everyone's choice to to do so sure um 
a lot of times I hear people go, yeah, I'm not going to give him any money. And this is where I was with Blizzard, which was, yeah, I don't really want to give him any money right now. But, um, I mean, I've paid him a lot of money and I'm going to enjoy what I paid for, which is totally reasonable. Mm-hmm. Absolutely reasonable. I'm curious if you're going to continue, you know, like playing StarCraft. and Because, I mean, you, you, you're not, you, you're like, people don't understand, you're like a hardcore right. competitive, high-level competitive StarCraft II player. Yeah. Yeah, you know, um, um, are you gonna continue playing that? Or are you looking for a new game? Like, where are you at on that? Oh man, I'm looking for a new game. Uh, to be <laughs> honest, it, but the Company problem, Heroes Three, right around the corner. I'll play it with you. I'm just saying. The problem is the the the, the design philosophy of StarCraft Two is it's just so good, and right. and nobody's come like close to it in my yeah. opinion, right? And yeah. and I was looking forward to like Frost Giant. They're developing an RTS in, in that sort of same design philosophy. And, and again, for people who don't know, Frost Giant is being it was founded by former members of Blizzard. Right. Um, but now those former members of Blizzard were high level executives while this stuff was going on. So, yeah. yeah. I, and, you know, and also I, several former Blizzard employees were mentioned by name in these allegations. Yeah. yeah. So, so people that that we, that we've been seeing bleeding out of Blizzard over recent years and we've been like, hey, are they bleeding talent out of it? And now it kind of seems like and we don't know this definitively, but it kind of seems like they were shoving them out the door because the things they were doing were getting too bad for even them to cover up. Right. Yeah. Like my personal uh, thought on it was these were people who were choosing to leave, leave the company because Activision was, you know, uh, taking too Activision. much control. Right. Right. You know, but now, but now we have to wonder, now you have to wonder yeah. were they leaving because Activision had an HR department, you know? Right. Yeah. It's yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's that's, awful. That's and so, yeah, what, what I did, um, personally, and, and again, you know, it, whatever anybody chooses to do, that's, that's their own thing. Um, right. but I installed, uninstalled every single blizzard game. I have spent mm. probably a hundred dollars at least on every Hearthstone expansion, right? Buying card packs. Yeah. Um, yeah. I uninstalled Hearthstone. I un- uninstalled Starcraft two, Diablo three, Starcraft remastered, Warcraft reforged. Like, uh, wow. I, I I've had for like WoW's well, been out for since 2004, so 17 yeah. years now. I would yeah. say 13 of those 17 years, I've had an active WoW subscription. I canceled that. Yeah, and you know, in their box it says, "Why'd you cancel?" It said, "You know, I said because you guys are rapey assholes, and I don't want to deal with you." <laughs> All right then, you Jesus. know, like I just, I, I'm done with Blizzard. I uninstalled the Battle.net launcher, and I, no, I, I yeah. that that's the line for me. I can't do it. Yeah. It's yeah, rough. it's it's I, I think I mean, at the end of the day, you know, it's it's uh, and we'll keep saying it. You spend your money where you see fit. And sure. you, you do what you see fit with your free time. Everyone's limited free time. Right. Um, but I think uh, it's it's easy to say that we're all just tremendously disappointed. Yeah. You know, I think we all have kind of had hopes that like, hey, man, maybe Blizzard will bring it bring it back around. You know, they've got Vicarious Visions. Vicarious Visions is doing great stuff. Diablo 2 Remake, they're working on that. It looks pretty great. You know, Hearthstone's still trucking along and the people that I know that play it still really enjoy it. You know, I think we've all kind of had these hopes in the back of our minds that like, man, they've been kind of in the dumps the last few years, but maybe they'll bring it around. Hey, and, you remember and, like two and a half, three years ago when we did an episode on Blizzard and at the end <laughs> of it, we were like, talk about a company that's never fallen from their highs. Oh, and then, yeah, that and episode's going to seem a little was weird. The Diablo 4 or Diablo Mobile, like, do yep. you have phones or whatever? Yeah, yeah, the, that episode's going to seem a little weird in <laughs> retrospect. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, um, no, that's where I'm at with abs- it personally. It's it's I I just can't do yeah. it anymore. And and you know, yeah. not to bring the show down yeah. to the very end, but that's that's my <laughs> right. No, and I mean I, I get it and I respect that. You know, the, right. the same way that I respect anyone saying, hey, you know, I spent my money, I'm going to play my game. Like right. we we all have, we, we, you know, it's important that we all know where we are on these things. Right. You know, and I I don't I know there's a lot of people that that don't even want to talk about it or hear about it. Right. And I get that, but I think it's important that regardless of where you land on it, you know, just know where you're landing on it right. and make it a, make it a decision, make it a choice that you're making, you know, regardless of what, what that decision ends up being. And, and, and it's, that it's, decision may change as more information comes to light. And true. And also possible. And maybe Seems pretty unlikely, right. but it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you never know. Well, I'm saying for people who are currently saying that, that they, that they're not going to let it affect them. Oh, right. They might, right, right, they right. might change their mind if things get worse. And, and the rest of us who are currently distancing ourselves from them, maybe it will turn out that this is all overblown somehow. And, and maybe we can uh. reverse too. It doesn't seem likely right now. I'm going to, I'm going to say but, that. Yeah. So guy in your, um, 
semi law related opinion. <laughs> Um, how long do you see this lawsuit dragging out? Is this one of those things like it's been going on for a decade, or is it like, um, you know, I, you know, I, it, it's it's hard. Or to is tell. it just kind of impossible to quantify at this point? It's it's kind of impossible to quantify to a certain extent, but typically with 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 things of this nature, um, since it's a civil lawsuit, uh, you know, you're not involving you know uh, authorities, uh, you know, uh, law enforcement authorities, excuse me, and yeah, so you're probably looking. Uh, they're, they're about to enter what's called the discovery phase where they're exchanging documents between parties or whatnot, um, yeah. and, and doing that review. And, and typically that's six months to a year of discovery before it actually goes to trial. Um, right. and then, then you have the, you set a trial date, you know, so I, I, I don't know, 12 to 18 months, I would think is probably the end of this first phase of it. And then if anything spawns after that. You know, we'll Man, see. Activision is probably so happy that that phase lasts past the release and tail of Diablo 2 remake. Right. Yeah. No joke. <laughs> they're probably they're probably like, oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Uh, you know, the the saddest part is I doubt this will affect the sales numbers of something like Call of Duty at all. Oh no. Well, because here's yeah, I mean the 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 real answer is that that Call of Duty is played by so many people that that a lot of people that play it, they don't play video games. Right. They're not interested in video games. They play Call of Duty, right. you know. It's like if you've ever got had that one friend that's like, man, I live for whatever my sport of... I live for basketball, you know, right. March Madness. This is my life. And then when basketball season's over, they're like just bored until basketball starts again. Right. And you're like, don't you watch other sports? And they're like, no, I only do basketball. Yeah. And you're like, oh, that, okay, well, uh, all right then. Right. Yeah, I uh, uh, also, you know... Uh, I'm I'm questioning how much of this will even be picked up by by general news media, and also how much of that will permeate to the actual viewers. I think until verdicts and and um, settlements start right. coming out, I don't think much is going to. And even then, if if break the game industry right. niche news press, and, and my fear is that just the average Joe schmo, even if they do see on the the evening news. Uh, Activision scandal, blah blah blah. They may not equate Activision with World of Warcraft and with Call of right. Duty and with Candy right. Crush and all their other massively successful games. But they do Candy Crush too. Yeah, they bought King several years ago. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, yeah. It's um, it's it's. I don't know. It's it's one of those things where um, it's 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 disappointing. It's disappointing to keep hearing these things about big giant game companies right. you know yeah. and I'm presumably you hear this thing i mean i presumably hear this thing in all sorts of different industries right. we just don't follow other industries that's we follow true. video games right. that's what we pay attention to um but it's uh it's 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 disappointing to hear this kind of thing come from these companies um and it further pushes me into just continuing to look at and enjoy the indie space yes. uh which um not that uh, there's know, been no scandals in the indie gaming space either yeah uh, gosh dang it mm -hmm. what was the bad one a while back nicholas yeah. was it nicholas Nicholas. Uh, yeah. yeah that one that that, that one was, oof, that was a mess that was pretty rough yeah anyway video games are a lot of fun and you should play them <laughs> and they are a positive influence on our guy. lives and they're a wonderful art form and i love them guy go 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 buy and play mini motorways there you <laughs> <Yeah>. go <laughs> fucking uninstall starcraft go play mini motorways just came out i've played five seconds of it hey. and i wish i wasn't doing a show so i could play right. five more seconds of it hey, it's uh, great. hey guy basically the same game yeah yeah basically the same <laughs> Uh, so since this is still your segment, uh, do you, do you have anything, uh, uh, uplifting for us? Anything positive? You give me something good. Um, oh, I beat Tetris effect on normal. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, that was hard as shit. It took me an hour and a half to beat the last stage. Mm. Good I've God. got, uh, uplifting news. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, today I found a tiny little frog dead in my floor. Yeah. That's and I picked uplifting. him up. And we, no, hold on. Wait, there's the rest of the story. I've heard the rest. Yeah, of the there's story. more. It's like a reverse old yeller. <laughs> um, I found this tiny little dead, like a like a frog in my floor, and I picked him up, and he was like totally limp, and like his little legs were all crusted in dirt mm. and cobwebs from like crawling around under my furniture and shit. And I went. I was like taking him to throw him in the trash can because he was obviously dead. Mm -hmm. And right before I put him in the can, I looked down, and his little uh, his little like throat, throat moved one time, like he was breathing. And I was like, oh, my God, we have to save this frog because uh, I realized he was alive. And I like meticulously held him under the sink under a tap and like took all the little dirt and cobwebs off of his little feet and everything. Mm. He was totally limp the whole time. The whole time I was like, he's dead. It was just nerves. I'm just like cleaning a dead frog here. <laughs> um, 
And he's teeny, he's like the size of a, a, like a, like a, like a quarter. He's a tiny little frog. And I clean all of his shit off and it's so hard to not just rip his whole leg off <laughs> on accident because he's so tiny. And I put him inside of a little jar with a little paper towel. And I was like, the whole time I'm like, this is so dumb. He's clearly dead. I come back an hour later and he's like revived. <laughs> Nice. He's totally fine. Hopping around doing frog stuff. He's living in my front yard. Nice. Since he's the opposite so, of old yeller, did you name him Young Greener? <laughs> yep, that's what I'm naming I'm him now. That's his name now. Well, now that happened. <laughs> Little Young Greener. <laughs> anyway, uh, Guy, thanks for producing the show, and thanks yeah, for being on the show definitely. with your um, uh, unqualified legal uh, opinion. <laughs> yeah, sure. We, we, we Insider it. knowledge of how like, an EDR M works. Uh, anyway, and thank you for listening. We'll be back next week uh, with hopefully a more within our usual time frame <laughs> length of episode. Nah. But I, t- I got a I got a spoiler. I kind of doubt it. <laughs> kind of doubt it. It's only like an hour forty five. You're fine. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, we'll see you next week. Uh, good night. Bye. 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 Bye.